On the 15th of May, 2014, Nakba Day, 17-year-old Nadim Nawara was fatally shot during a protest in the town of Bitaniye near Ramallah. Later, on the same day, 16-year-old Muhammad Abu Dahar was also shot to death. Dozens of Palestinian teenagers have similarly been killed or wounded by Israeli soldiers and other security personnel in the West Bank in recent years. Most of those killings have taken place off camera and a very small minority were investigated. Yet these Nakba Day killings were captured by security cameras installed outside a nearby shop, by television cameras filming the protests, as well as by other activists present. Despite this footage, the Nakba Day massacre was denied by the Israeli military. The first victim, Nadim Nawara, was shot while walking unarmed and posing no threat. Siam Nawara, his father, found the fatal bullet inside Nadim's school bag. He ordered an autopsy, which confirmed the cause of death was live fire. Israeli officials still denied that their soldiers were responsible. A military spokesperson said its forces fired no live rounds during the clashes, but only rubber-coated steel bullets, and implied that the evidence had been tampered with. A CNN camera crew was also filming when Nadim Nawara was shot. Their footage shows two soldiers aiming their rifles and shooting. And then demonstrators carrying the mortally wounded teenager to the ambulance. He later died in hospital. To determine whether one of these soldiers shot Nawara, the CNN video had to be synchronized with the footage of the security cameras that showed Nawara falling. We looked for a clear marker in both videos. A man in a white shirt is visible in both video sources. He makes two distinct turns. These turning points allow us to synchronize the two videos together. At the moment the CCTV footage shows Nawara starting to fall, we can hear the sound of a gun captured in the CNN footage. The smoke in the image indicates that the soldier marked here, standing behind the bush, fired this shot. When we hear the second shot, fired by the soldier on the right, we see that Nawara is already being taken to an ambulance. Carrying the mortally wounded teenager to the ambulance. He later died in hospital. In an attempt to deny the killing, the military claimed that there was not a sightline between the soldiers and Nawara. To check this, we built a 3D model based on all available media sources as well as using our own measurements on site. Here is the security camera that captured the moment Nawara and Abu Dahad fell. We modeled the trajectories from each soldier to Nawara. A direct line of sight exists, but only from the soldier on the left. The same one we already established had fired the first shot. 
When the IDF investigated this case, they first arrested the soldier on the right. An Israeli ballistic expert claimed that the rubber bullet extension visible on the weapon of both soldiers cannot be used to fire live ammunition. A look into the manufacturer's product catalogue proved him wrong. Shooting live fire through the rubber bullet's extension is possible. But to determine whether the soldier had actually fired live ammunition through the rubber bullet extension, it was necessary to understand how an M16 rifle works. A blank cartridge is loaded into the rifle's chamber, while the rubber-coated steel bullet is manually inserted into the end of the extension. There is not enough pressure in the gun to automatically discharge the blank cartridge. So after firing the rubber bullet, the cartridge needs to be manually released by cocking back the gun. The footage here was captured by a Palestinian TV crew during another point in the protest. It shows a different soldier firing a rubber-coated steel bullet and cocking back his weapon afterwards. When live ammunition is fired through an M16 rifle, the gas pressure is strong enough to automatically and immediately eject the spent cartridge from the chamber, thus reloading the weapon. Looking carefully at the soldier, we can see a single brass-colored pixel flying out of the gun. The spent cartridge was automatically ejected, indicating a live round was fired. But the soldier, who we believe shot Nadim Nawada, is also seen cocking back his gun. Cocking back his gun here can only be explained by him attempting to conceal the fact that he shot live ammunition. He pretended that he needed to reload. An Israeli military soldier's blog speaks of this practice. When I was in Gaza, I met somebody that told me about a common trick. You shoot the rubber bullet, and then you are left with the empty extension on the rifle. Then you shoot live fire, when the officer next to you thinks that you are shooting rubber. In any case, he said, the Palestinians take the body and there is no investigation, so who cares? If a soldier fires live round into a rubber bullet loaded into the end of the extension, the gun would explode and cause serious harm to the soldier. That no rubber-coated steel bullet was put into the extension before the soldier fired the gun demonstrates that the killing of Nadim Nawara was premeditated, that by shooting a live round through a rubber bullet extension and by cocking back his gun afterwards, the killer both planned the killing and tried to cover his tracks. Caught on camera, the shooting deaths of two Palestinian teenagers, both gunned down on the same patch of asphalt. The second, an hour and 13 minutes after the first. About an hour and a half later, at the very same location, the second teenager, Muhammad Abu Dahar, was shot and killed while walking home. This footage was recorded by the same security camera. Unlike the video recording of Nawara's death, the Palestinian TV cameras were not aiming at the soldiers when the lethal shot was fired. What they did capture, however, was the sound of the lethal gunshot. Synchronizing the TV footage with the security cameras, it is clear that the sound they captured is the gunshot that killed Abu Dhabi. In order to understand if this lethal shot was rubber-coated steel bullets or live ammunition, we collected sounds of gunshots throughout the day, starting with the shots fired at the time of the killing of Nadim Nawara. The precise moment when Nawara was shot, CNN's camera was rolling. We now know that the sound of the gunshot that killed Nadim Nawara is the result of live fire shot through a rubber bullet extension. At the precise moment... The second shot was a rubber-coated steel bullet fired through the rifle's extension. 
Palestinians. And then demonstrators carrying... We confirm this by studying the images further. A cameraman is seen in the CCTV footage, close to the scene where the second shot is fired. The still image taken by Samar Nazar captures the same cameraman in the same position and moment. Studying this high-resolution photograph reveals an additional detail. A rubber-coated steel bullet in mid-flight. This photograph allowed us to confirm that the second shot we heard was the sound of a rubber bullet. At the Palestinians. When we visualize the sonic frequencies in a spectrogram, we can compare the distinct sound signature of live rounds shot through a rubber bullet extension and that of rubber coated bullets. Compared to the sound of rubber coated bullets, live fire is louder in higher frequencies and softer in the lower frequencies. In addition to the lethal gunshot that killed Muhammad Abu Dahar, the Palestinian TV crew captured four other gunshots on that day. Clip 4 captures the sound of the lethal gunshot that killed Abu Dahar. The differences between the sound of this shot and all others are distinct even to an untrained ear. Similar to what we saw in the CNN footage, clip 4 is louder in the higher frequencies and softer in the lower frequencies. We can also see that protesters who are continually subjected to such sounds can hear the distinction between the different types of gunshots. The footage shows that protesters only duck for cover and flee the scene when they hear the sound of live ammunition being fired. To confirm the source of the fire, we compare this sound to the sound of an M16 gun shooting without an extension and to an M16 gun shooting with a silencer. The signature of the shot we identified is somewhere in between these extremes. The sound of live ammunition becomes suppressed when shot through a rubber bullet extension, like in a silencer, but not to the same extent. This specific sound signature shows that Abu Dahar and Nawara were both killed by an Israeli soldier using the same method and possibly the same gun. At the precise moment when Nawara was shot, CNN's camera was rolling, filming an Israeli soldier shooting his rifle at the Palestinians. This investigation was incrementally released on the website of Defense for Children International, Palestine. As evidence accumulated, Israeli authorities could no longer deny lethal involvement in the Nakba Day shootings and arrested a soldier named Ben Derry. Derry was charged with manslaughter and not premeditated murder, as our study shows. Furthermore, Derry was only charged with the killing of Nadim Nawara. Yet our study also implicates him as a suspect in the killing of Muhammad Abu Dahar. Derry has been released from prison and kept under house arrest while awaiting his trial. <laughs>